A self-replicating machine is a type of autonomous robot that is capable of reproducing itself autonomously using raw materials found in the environment, thus exhibiting self-replication in a way analogous to that found in nature. The concept of self-replicating machines has been advanced and examined by Homer Jacobson, Edward F. Moore, Freeman Dyson, John von Neumann and in more recent times by K. Eric Drexler in his book on nanotechnology. Engines of Creation and by Robert Freitas and Ralph Merkel in their review Kinematic Self-Replicating Machines which provided the first comprehensive analysis of the entire replicator design space. The future development of such technology is an integral part of several plans involving the mining of moons and asteroid belts for ore and other materials, the creation of lunar factories, and even the construction of solar power satellites in space. The possibly misnamed von Neumann probe is one theoretical example of such a machine. Von Neumann also worked on what he called a universal constructor, a self-replicating machine that would operate in a cellular automata environment. A self-replicating machine is an artificial self-replicating system that relies on conventional large-scale technology and automation. Certain idiosyncratic terms are occasionally found in the literature. For example, the term clanking replicator was once used by Drexler to distinguish microscale replicating systems from the microscopic nanorobots or assemblers that nanotechnology may make possible, but the term is informal and is rarely used by others in popular or technical discussions. Replicators have also been called von Neumann machines after John von Neumann, who first rigorously studied the idea. However, the term von Neumann machine is less specific and also refers to a completely unrelated computer architecture that von Neumann proposed and so its use is discouraged where accuracy is important. Von Neumann himself used the term universal constructor to describe such self-replicating machines. Historians of machine tools, even before the numerical control era, sometimes figuratively said that machine tools were a unique class of machines because they have the ability to reproduce themselves by copying all of their parts. Implicit in these discussions is that a human would direct the cutting processes, and would then be assembling the parts. The same is true for repraps, which are another class of machines sometimes mentioned in reference to such non-autonomous self-replication. In contrast, Machines that are truly autonomously self replicating are the main subject discussed here. History The general concept of artificial machines capable of producing copies of themselves dates back at least several hundred years. An early reference is an anecdote regarding the philosopher Ina Copyright Descartes, who suggested to Queen Christina of Sweden that the human body could be regarded as a machine. She responded by pointing to a clock and ordering C to it that it reproduces offspring. Several other variations on this anecdotal response also exist. Samuel Butler proposed in his 1872 novel Er Uhan that machines were already capable of reproducing themselves but it was man who made them do so, and added that machines which reproduce machinery do not reproduce machines after their own kind. In 1802 William Paley formulated the first known teleological argument depicting machines producing other machines, suggesting that the question of who originally made a watch was rendered moot if it were demonstrated that the watch was able to manufacture a copy of itself. Scientific study of self-reproducing machines was anticipated by John Bernal as early as 1929 and by mathematicians such as Stephen Kleene who began developing recursion theory in the 1930s. Much of this latter work was motivated by interest in information processing and algorithms rather than physical implementation of such a system. However, equals von Neumann's kinematic model equals a detailed conceptual proposal for a physical non-biological self-replicating system was first put forward by mathematician John von Neumann in lectures delivered in 1948 and 1949, when he proposed a kinematic self-reproducing automaton model as a thought experiment. Von Neumann's concept of a physical self-replicating machine was dealt with only abstractly, with the hypothetical machine using a C or stockroom of spare parts as its source of raw materials. The machine had a program stored on a memory tape that directed it to retrieve parts from this C using a manipulator, assemble them into a duplicate of itself, and then copy the contents of its memory tape into the empty duplicates. The machine was envisioned as consisting of as few as eight different types of components. 
four logic elements that send and receive stimuli and four mechanical elements used to provide a structural skeleton and mobility. While qualitatively sound, von Neumann was evidently dissatisfied with this model of a self-replicating machine due to the difficulty of analyzing it with mathematical rigor. He went on to instead develop an even more abstract model self-replicated based on cellular automata. His original kinematic concept remained obscure until it was popularized in a 1955 issue of Scientific American. Equals Moore's Artificial Living Plants equals, in 1956 mathematician Edward F. Moore proposed the first known suggestion for a practical real-world self-replicating machine, also published in Scientific American. Moore's artificial living plants were proposed as machines able to use air, water and soil as sources of raw materials and to draw its energy from sunlight via a solar battery or a steam engine. He chose the seashore as an initial habitat for such machines, giving them easy access to the chemicals in seawater, and suggested that later generations of the machine could be designed to float freely on the ocean's surface as self-replicating factory barges or to be placed in barren desert terrain that was otherwise useless for industrial purposes. The self-replicators would be harvested for their component parts, to be used by humanity in other non-replicating machines. Equals Dyson's replicating systems equals, your next major development of the concept of self-replicating machines was a series of thought experiments proposed by physicist Freeman Dyson in his 1970 Venuxum lecture. He proposed three large-scale applications of machine replicators. First was to send a self-replicating system to Saturn's moon Enceladus, which in addition to producing copies of itself would also be programmed to manufacture and launch solar sail-propelled cargo spacecraft. These spacecraft would carry blocks of Enceladine ice to Mars, where they would be used to terraform the planet. His second proposal was a solar-powered factory system designed for a terrestrial desert environment, and his third was an industrial development kit based on this replicator that could be sold to developing countries to provide them with as much industrial capacity as desired. When Dyson revised and reprinted his lecture in 1979 he added proposals for a modified version of Moore's seagoing artificial living plants that was designed to distill and store fresh water for human use in the Astrochicon. Equals Advanced Automation for Space Missions equals In 1980 Inspired by a 1979 New Directions workshop held at Woods Hole, NASA conducted a joint summer study with ASEE entitled Advanced Automation for Space Missions to produce a detailed proposal for self-replicating factories to develop lunar resources without requiring additional launches or human workers on site. The study was conducted at Santa Clara University and ran from June 23 to August 29, with the final report published in 1982. The proposed system would have been capable of exponentially increasing productive capacity and the design could be modified to build self-replicating probes to explore the galaxy. The reference design included small computer-controlled electric carts running on rails inside the factory, mobile paving machines that used large parabolic mirrors to focus sunlight on lunar regolith to melt and sinter it into a hard surface suitable for building on, and robotic front-end loaders for strip mining. Raw lunar regolith would be refined by a variety of techniques, primarily hydrofluoric acid leaching. Large transports with a variety of manipulator arms and tools were proposed as the constructors that would put together new factories from parts and assemblies produced by its parent. Power would be provided by a canopy of solar cells supported on pillars. The other machinery would be placed under the canopy. A casting robot would use sculpting tools and templates to make plaster molds. Plaster was selected because the molds are easy to make, can make precise parts with good surface finishes, and the plaster can be easily recycled afterward using an oven to bake the water back out. The robot would then cast most of the parts either from non-conductive molten rock or purified metals. A carbon dioxide laser cutting and welding system was also included. A more speculative, more complex microchip fabricator was specified to produce the computer and electronic systems, but the designers also said that it might prove practical to ship the chips from Earth as if they were vitamins. A 2004 study supported by NASA's Institute for Advanced Concepts took this idea further. Some experts are beginning to consider self-replicating machines for asteroid mining. 
much of the design study was concerned with the simple, flexible chemical system for processing the ores, and the differences between the ratio of elements needed by the replicator, and the ratios available in lunar regolith. The element that most limited the growth rate was chlorine, needed to process regolith for aluminium. Chlorine is very rare in lunar regolith. Equals Lachner when or in replicators equals, in 1995, inspired by Dyson's 1970s suggestion of seeding uninhabited deserts on Earth with self-replicating machines for industrial development, Klaus Lachner and Christopher Wendt developed a more detailed outline for such a system. They proposed a colony of cooperating mobile robots 10 a Euro 30 cm in size running on a grid of electrified ceramic tracks around stationary manufacturing equipment and fields of solar cells. Their proposal didn't include a complete analysis of the system's material requirements, but described a novel method for extracting the 10 most common chemical elements found in raw desert topsoil using a high-temperature carbothermic process. This proposal was popularized in Discover magazine, featuring solar-powered desalination equipment used to irrigate the desert in which the system was based. They named their machines Orns, from the Greek word orline which means to grow. Recent work. Equals self-replicating rapid prototypers equals. Early experimentation with rapid prototyping in 1997-2000 was not expressly oriented toward reproducing rapid prototyping systems themselves, but rather extended simulated evolutionary robotics techniques into the physical world. Later developments in rapid prototyping have given the process the ability to produce a wide variety of electronic and mechanical components, making this a rapidly developing frontier in self-replicating system research. In 1998 Chris Phoenix informally outlined a design for a hydraulically powered replicator a few cubic feet in volume that used ultraviolet light to cure soft plastic feedstock and a fluidic logic control system, but didn't address most of the details of assembly procedures, error rates, or machining tolerances. In 2005, Adrian Bowyer of the University of Bath started the RepRap project to develop a rapid prototyping machine which would be able to manufacture some or most of its own components, making such machines cheap enough for people to buy and use in their homes. The project is releasing its designs and control programs under the GNU GPL. The RepRap approach uses fused deposition modeling to manufacture plastic components, possibly incorporating conductive pathways for circuitry. Other components, such as steel rods, nuts and bolts, motors and separate electronic components, would be supplied externally. In 2006 the project produced a basic functional prototype and in May 2008 the machine succeeded in producing all of the plastic parts required to make a child machine. Some researchers have proposed a microfactory of specialized machines that support recursion a euro nearly all of the parts of all of the machines in the factory can be manufactured by the factory. Equals NIAC studies on self-replicating systems equals, in the spirit of the 1980 Advanced Automation for Space Missions study, the NASA Institute for Advanced Concepts began several studies of self-replicating system design in 2002 and 2003. Four phase I grants were awarded, Hod Lipson, Autonomous Self-Extending Machines for Accelerating Space Exploration, Gregory Karigjian, Architecture for Unmanned Self-Replicating Lunar Factories, Paul Todd, Robotic Lunar Esopoasis, Tihema Toth Fegel, Modeling Kinematic Cellular Automata, an approach to self-replication The study concluded that complexity of the development was equal to that of a Pentium 4, and promoted a design based on cellular automata. Equals Cornell University's self-assembler equals, in 2005, a team of researchers at Cornell University, including Hod Lipson, implemented a self-assembling machine. The machine is composed of a tower of four articulated cubes, known as molecubes, which can revolve about a trigonal. This enables the tower to function as a robotic arm, collecting nearby molecules and assembling them into a copy of itself. The arm is directed by a computer program, which is contained within each molecule, analogous to how each animal cell contains an entire copy of its DNA. However, the machine cannot manufacture individual molecules, nor do they occur naturally, so its status as a self-replicator is debatable. 
equals New York University artificial DNA tile motifs equals, in 2011 a team of scientists at New York University created a structure called BTX based around three double helix molecules, each made from a short strand of DNA. Treating each group of three double helices as a code letter, they can build up self-replicating structures that encode large quantities of information. Equal self-replication of magnetic polymers equals, in 2001 Jorbrovik at University of Oslo created a system of magnetic building blocks, which in response to temperature fluctuations, spontaneously form self-replicating polymers. Partial construction, partial construction is the concept that the constructor creates a partially constructed offspring, which is then left to complete its own construction. The von Neumann model of self-replication envisages that the mother automaton should construct all portions of daughter automatons, without exception and prior to the initiation of such daughters. Partial construction alters the construction relationship between mother and daughter automatons, such that the mother constructs but a portion of the daughter, and upon initiating this portion of the daughter, thereafter retracts from imparting further influence upon the daughter. Instead, the daughter automaton is left to complete its own development. This is to say, means exist by which automatons may develop via the mechanism of a zygote. Self-replicating spacecraft The idea of an automated spacecraft capable of constructing copies of itself was first proposed in scientific literature in 1974 by Michael A. Arbib, but the concept had appeared earlier in science fiction such as the 1967 novel Berserker by Fred Saberhagen or the 1950 Nova Let trilogy The Voyage of the Space Beagle by A. E. Van Vogt. The first quantitative engineering analysis of a self-replicating spacecraft was published in 1980 by Robert Freitas, in which the non-replicating project Daedalus design was modified to include all subsystems necessary for self-replication. The design strategy was to use the probe to deliver a seed factory with a mass of about 443 tons to a distant site, have the seed factory replicate many copies of itself there to increase its total manufacturing capacity, and then use the resulting automated industrial complex to construct more probes with a single seed factory on board each. Other references A number of patents have been granted for self-replicating machine concepts. The most directly relevant include U.S. Patent 4734856 Autogeneric System Inventor, Davis. Danny E., U.S. Patent 5659477 Self-Reproducing Fundamental Fabricating Machines Inventor, Collins. Charles M., U.S. Patent 5764518 Self-Reproducing Fundamental Fabricating Machine System Inventor, Collins. Charles M. June 1998. Collins PCT, and U.S. Patent 6510359 Method and System for Self-Replicating Manufacturing Stations Inventors, Merkel. Ralph C. Parker. Eric G. Skidmore. George D. Macroscopic replicators are mentioned briefly in the fourth chapter of K. Eric Drexler's 1986 book Engines of Creation. In 1995, Nick Szabo proposed a challenge to build a microscale replicator from Lego robot kits and similar basic parts. Szabo wrote that this approach was easier than previous proposals for microscale replicators, but successfully predicted that even this method would not lead to a microscale replicator within 10 years. In 2004, Robert Freitas and Ralph Merkel published the first comprehensive review of the field of self-replication, in their book Kinematic Self-Replicating Machines, which includes 3,000-plus literature references. This book included a new molecular assembler design, a primer on the mathematics of replication, and the first comprehensive analysis of the entire replicator design space. Fictional Self-Replicating Machines in Literature Many types of self-replicating machines have been featured in literature, and particularly in science fiction. Equals other notable works containing replicators equals, science fiction is full of engaging stories containing replicators, 2010 Odyssey 2 by Arthur C. Clarke, The Adolescence of P1 by Thomas J. Ryan is another early fictional account of a computer virus or worm. The Berserkers from the Berserker series of sci-fi novels and short stories by Fred Saberhagen, 
Cold as Ice and the Can I Meet Club by Charles Sheffield, The Diamond Age by Neil Stevenson, which depicts a near-future Earth society wherein nanotechnology, including self-replicators, both exist and influence daily life greatly. Evolution by Stephen Baxter, The Festival, a civilization of uploaded minds with strange designs on humanity, from Singularity Sky by Charles Stross, The Killers, a civilization of, of self-replicating machines designed to destroy any potential threat to their creators, from The Forge of God by Greg Bear, The Necessary Thing by Robert Jekley, in which the universal replicator is unwittingly tricked into replicating itself, Recursion by Tony Ballant in ISBN 0-330-42699-0, The Shockwave Rider by John Brunner is an early example of a fictional account of a computer virus or worm. Spin by Robert Charles Wilson, When Harley Was Won a novel by David Gerald and in a short story that was published in Galaxy in 1969, a computer learns to randomly dial phone numbers until it hits a telephone modem that is answered by another computer. It then programs the answering computer to begin dialing random numbers in search of yet another computer. The infection, postulated long before existence of the Internet, is assumed to spread exponentially through susceptible computers, like a biological infection. This was the first account of a self-replicating computer program, a virus or worm. The World at the End of Time by Frederick Pohl, The Zymos and Anosoms from Prey by Michael Crichton. Fictional self-replicating machines in movies, many types of self-replicating machines have been featured in the movies. Equals Screamers equals, the movie Screamers, based on Dick's short story Second Variety, features a group of robot weapons created by mankind to act as von Neumann devices slash berserkers. The original robots are subterranean buzzers that make a screaming sound as they approach a potential victim beneath the soil. These machines are self-replicating and, as is found out through the course of the movie, they are quite intelligent and have managed to evolve into newer, more dangerous forms, most notably human forms which the real humans in the movie cannot tell apart from other real humans except by trial and error. Equals the Terminator equals the Terminator is a 1984 science fiction action film directed and co-written by James Cameron which describes a war between mankind and self-replicating machines led by a central artificial intelligence known as Skynet. Machine civilizations are a recurring theme in fiction. Fictional self-replicating machines on television, the concept is also widely utilized in science fiction television. Equals legs equals the TV series Legs featured an army of self-replicating robots known as Mantrid drones. Equals Stargate SG-1 equals, additionally, the replicators are a horde of self-replicating machines that appear frequently in Stargate SG-1. During the course of the series, the replicators assume a human form and pose a huge threat to the galaxy. A more sophisticated version of the human form replicators, who call themselves Assurans also appear in the spin-off series Stargate Atlantis. Equals Star Trek equals, Star Trek Sporg. Equals Nanits equals, Nanits could also be considered self-replicating machines. Prospects for implementation, as the use of industrial automation has expanded over time, some factories have begun to approach a semblance of self-sufficiency that is suggestive of self-replicating machines. However, such factories are unlikely to achieve full closure until the cost and flexibility of automated machinery comes close to that of human labor and the manufacture of spare parts and other components locally becomes more economical in transporting them from elsewhere. As Samuel Butler has pointed out in Aruhan, replication of partially closed universal machine tool factories is already possible. Since safety is a primary goal of all legislative consideration of regulation of such development, Future development efforts may be limited to systems which lack either control, matter, or energy closure. Fully capable machine replicators are most useful for developing resources in dangerous environments which are not easily reached by existing transportation systems. An artificial replicator can be considered to be a form of artificial life. Depending on its design, it might be subject to evolution over an extended period of time. However, with robust error correction, and the possibility of external intervention, 
the common science fiction scenario of robotic life run amok will remain extremely unlikely for the foreseeable future. See also, AI takeover, 3D printing, computer virus, Conway's game of life, ecophagy, existential risk from advanced artificial intelligence, Grey Goo, Lights Out, Nano Robotics, Speedgerman Monster. References Bibliography, Colvin, Fred H., 60 Years with Men and Machines, New York and London, McGraw-Hill, LCCN 47,003,762. Available as a reprint from Lindsay Publications. Forward by Ralph Landers. External links, video of Adrian Bowyer talking about Rep Rap at the Pop. Tech 2007 Conference. The Clanking Replicator Project, Bootstrap Your Own Self-Replicating. Rapid Prototyping Machine, Cornell Self-Replicating Machine, The Rep Rap Project, Creating Wealth Without Money. Terraforming Mars and Venus Using Machine Self-Replicating Systems, Green Goo, Life in the Era of Humane Genocide by Nick Sabo.